How's it going folks and welcome back to Alpine. Today we are in Canada for the Canadian Grand Prix. This is race number eight of the season. If it's not race number eight, that's all good. I'm pretty sure it's number eight. Today we have a new upgrade. A front wing has arrived and look at this performance increase. Acceleration gains, medium speed cornering gains, some high speed cornering gains in dirty air and also some improvements to our brake cooling. One minor issue, you know, that's all good isn't it? Upgrades and stuff. It's going to rain on race day, so knowing my track record, it's all going to go horribly wrong anyway. The Canadian Grand Prix tends to have red flags and safety cars in this game. Yeah, I, I'm kind of expecting one after last time as well. Let's see how we get on today. Now, before we start things today, I know people will get very worried unless they see me hit the install button. There you have it. The front wings are installed for this race. And also, I can confirm it's actually episode 9. I could just redo the intro, but I'm not that kind of professional. Of course, we're back today for another daily F1 manager video. Yesterday, I set a like goal of 2,000 likes. I'll be honest, I'm sat here recording now. That video has only been up for like 10 minutes, so I don't know if it's going to hit the like goal or not. But if this video hits 2,000 likes, I'll do a video tomorrow as well. Imagine if we don't hit 2,000 likes two days in a row now. That would be awkward. This bit might just get cut out the video. Of course, if you did miss last episode in Azerbaijan, you should go watch it. It was very, very eventful. There was a red flag lap one. I don't... Does that count as a spoiler? This is after that. I'm allowed to give spoilers. There was a red flag on lap one. I'm hoping that we're not going to see quite the same level of chaos today. So heading into the Canadian Grand Prix, that front wing upgrade is here. We have also had our factory upgraded, although we won't see the effects of that immediately. The next kind of ATR period in terms of wind tunnel time reset and stuff is in 10 days time. We've got a couple of upgrades, obviously, today with the two front wings. We have got a chassis still in the works, though. And when it comes to our qualifying aims for today, I'm just keeping it simple. I say that. I tried to keep it simple last time and it didn't work out. But today, I think our car is better suited to this track. Two cars in the top 10 is very much the aim. And as we head into the race weekend, you can just see here the weather forecast. Moderate rain for the first two practice sessions of the weekend on Friday. In terms of Sunday's race, light rain. I'd almost rather it just rain heavily so I know which tyres to go on to. I always feel like when you see light rain as the forecast, you have to worry a little bit more. Of course, as we've done the last few weekends, we are going to be sticking Piastri in Alonso's seat because he needs the experience. We're going to set up these cars. I'm going to join you guys in a moment as we prepare for qualifying. After the first practice session, I was worried. Turns out I didn't need to worry quite as much. You can see Piastri and Ocon were struggling, but by P3, little bit of tweaks to the setups between sessions as I simulated through them. We have currently got Ocon in P6, Alonso in P8. If they could qualify there, that would be amazing. I feel like that almost has to be the aim to get both drivers into the top eight. Mercedes looking pretty good with Hamilton. Russell is struggling. That's what we want to see. And for the first time, I think, all season, Yuki Tsunoda closer to matching his teammate Pierre Gasly's performance in that Alpha Tauri car. Given the fact that rain is coming, qualifying as far up the grid as we can to avoid any carnage behind is going to be important. Let's go see how we get on, shall we? Okay, qualifying in Canada. Clear and sunny skies above and, well, the aim of the game get both drivers into the top 10. I feel like that has now just consistently become the aim. We have consistently not achieved it. So going into this Saturday, I was hoping things were going to be different. In the end, I sent out the drivers for a Q1 run-in. They all got blocked, as is usual. Both drivers in the bottom five. You know the deal by now. I decided not even to show the blocking today. I don't think it was Perez for once, so that was a nice change. Ultimately, though, we did manage to get out the session. Both Alonso and Ocon were able to go faster without the kind of traffic in the way. A little bit odd, perhaps, although maybe slightly less odd when we talk about it in a moment. Alonso out-qualified by his teammate for, I think, the first time in any session. I feel like every other session... Ocon's done better than Alonso, so a little bit of a change there. Down at the bottom, usual suspects leaving in Q1. And well, into Q2 we went, sending our cars out early. Good news for us, clear track. No traffic this time around, so yeah, able to get some really good running early on. There was, shall we say, some slightly less good news. Alonso crossed the line. Okay time, but you can see in the bottom left, minor ERS damage. Yes, our energy recovery system having issues and Ocon went over half a second faster than his teammate. That is a massive, massive margin. I checked the ERS, 34% wear. That's not good. Of course, over the course of the season, we are going to be expected to change parts, but we only get two power units for the entire year. The fact that Alonso's is shown wear in race nine, 
a little bit of a concern, and clearly it was having an impact on his car's performance. You can see after the initial run-ins of Q2, he was down in the elimination zone, down in 13th, and well, it wasn't going to get any better. As he comes around this final corner of his flying lap, you can see the sector times all yellow. That means they are not personal bests. It means that he's gone quicker before, and this ERS damage, it was causing his issues. That is absolutely undeniable, especially the end of the lap. It's a long straight. Alonso couldn't improve his time, so he was out with that performance there. Ocon, however, did make it through sixth fastest, at least when he set his time. He would tumble down a little bit as the session went on, but only one of our two drivers through to the final qualifying session yet again. And I have already got now a little bit of a dilemma. Am I going to swap the ERS system? Are we going to swap the power unit in Alonso's car? I mean, that is a, a dilemma I'm going to need to think on, I think, before the race begins. As for Ocon... He finished his first lap of Q3, and you can see the message in the bottom right. He's now having the minor ERS damage. Of course, we are using the Renault engine. We are Alpine Renault for all intents and purposes. We are the only team that use our own kind of engine on the entire grid. And apparently, we have an ERS issue where our ERS units are just bad because, yeah, Ocon's was done after that lap. And similar story to Alonso, really. Q3, going around the final corner, you can see in the bottom right, every single sector yellow. We are just going slower and slower and slower. This final part of the lap as well is a very, very power intensive bit. You're dumping your battery to get, obviously, down the straight, through the chicane, past the wall of champions, and to the start-finish line. And we knew this was bad when we looked behind us, because while well, Bottas and Norris were blocked on their initial laps. We were three tenths of a second down on Russell, someone who we would ordinarily out-qualify. Ocon couldn't go better. Norris went faster. Bottas, the next across the line, he was running in P10. And it, I, I, you know what's going to happen here, I think. He was just going to relegate us further. He was the final car to cross that start-finish line. Ocon, down in 10th, has his own battery issues. And yeah, I've got to make a decision as to whether or not I swap out the power units for the race. But a qualifying two forget Leclerc on pole, but Max Verstappen taking a grid penalty. No real other surprises. Yuki Tsunoda couldn't show that form he had shown in the practice session. And you can see just as I was looking at the sector times, we were losing over two tenths of a second just in the final sector on Ocon. That is a part of the track where we'd ordinarily keep up. So clearly the power unit thing it's a big problem it's impacts our performance massively with that in mind penalties and part changes might well have to happen going into race day <laughs> okay you join me in canada it's sunday it's race day you could tell by these strategies the kind of race that we are going to be perhaps planning for today canada a track where safety cars happen fairly frequently this weather forecast is a weird one it is a race where the track could get wet. It might get very, very wet. We might need to be on the wet tyres at the moment. I think my plan is pit lap 10 for Inters, then try and get the Inters all the way to the end of this period, lap 60-ish, and then move on to slick tyres for the last 10 laps of the race. But a lot is going to hinge on how much does it rain in this period here, because if it rains hard, the Inters might not be the right tyre. There might be a world where you go onto the wets. And also, you might have noticed... There is going to be a period where the track will start to dry up quite significantly. If there's one thing I've learned playing this game, you can't plan that far ahead with the weather. And this chart here is very, very often a lie. So, uh, yeah, this is going to be a race where anything could really happen. I have made the decision to swap both power units in the cars. The good news is we are within our allocation, so we don't have to take a penalty this weekend to swap for a same spec power part. But down the line... If our backup ERS units break, uh, we will have to take new parts. And with that, there will be grid penalties involved. And given how much our ERS 1 set wore out in car 1, we are almost certainly going to have to take a third ERS unit in both cars. But you know what? That's future Jack's problem in 10 races time. Current Jack ha really has to worry about this weather and just hope we can make things work. The strategy is kind of simple. Get on the soft tyre, push them hard. When the rain comes, get on the right tyre and then just be on the right tyre rest of the race it sounds so simple when i say it like that it very rarely is in the rain let's see how we get on let's get in to the canadian grand prix quite a few clouds overhead as we look at the lineup on the grid and there we've got esteban ocon not as close to the front as they might have wished for 
But we know the race order can change a lot during those first few corners. And here's Alonso, the team's second driver. With their starting position in the back 10, they'll have their work cut out for them. Everything's been building to this. The drivers are ready and raring to go. It's the Canadian Grand Prix. And it's lights out and away we go. Okay, folks, the Canadian Grand Prix, it's produced some classics in its time, especially when it rains. Perhaps we are in for another one today. We are now on board with the previous race winner, Fernando Alonso, who is not having the best start. He's currently running down in P14. He's got a Haz up the inside of Mick Schumacher, who's going to look to make a move on him. Just looking at the tyre selections for the teams, lots of softs, lots of mediums. No one going to be pitting. And Ocon made up three places. You know what, Esteban? I'm sorry that I didn't give you any focus on the start. What did he do here? He went up the inside and he's just made it work. That is... Um, we chose the wrong driver to spectate. I could only apologise. That is absolutely mad by Esteban Ocon. Oh, my word. Uh, you know what? We'll go see what he's up to now. He's, he's looking to have a go on the Mercs. Of course, the Mercs, they're big rivals for us this weekend. Alonso has managed to get Bash Schumacher just behind. It's like I'm intentionally avoiding all the action with who I picked to watch here. Ocon, though, with that ERS, with tyres to burn through, of course, no one going to stop before the rain arrives from the looks of things. Any places you make up now could be crucial. I've heard a lockup. I've heard a crunch. I think there is a crash behind. I don't think Alonso's involved. We have a lap one safety car here. There is, a, there is rain on the way. The rain is going to arrive sooner into this race than anyone has planned. Sonoda's got a warning. There's been a multiple car crash behind. We aren't going to pit. I want to see what's happened. You could hear the crunch. This hairpin is a nasty corner where incidents tend to happen. As Sonoda just locked up here, he has. And oh my word, the two Alfa Romeos launched into one another. Alfa, of course, the team directly trailing behind us. So if both their cars are out there, it's, well, it's bad news then. It's kind of good news for us. Is anyone going to be retiring from this race? In fact, I'll tell you, both Alphas are retiring from this race. I mean, it's a good start for us if we're looking for a cynical lens. Um, it's not such a good start when you consider the fact the rain now is going to arrive sooner. We are going to be doing slower laps under this safety car. The rain that was previously estimated to arrive around lap 10, 11 might come a tiny bit sooner all of a sudden. So with our cars saving tyres, saving fuel, saving the battery up as well, of course, we haven't really used a lot anyway. And, uh, well, we could be behind the safety car for an extra lap or two. Of course, the pack all going to be bunched together. But a lap one safety car here in Canada. Rain on the way. Why do I feel like this is about to be a really, really chaotic race? It's just got that feeling. Does anyone else have that feeling? Safety cars in this lap. We're going to tell our drivers to get ready to push. I didn't watch Ocon on the previous start. We'll watch him on this one here. Of course, the safety car is going to vanish up the road. And now Charles Leclerc, currently running in first, is going to be the man to dictate this restart. When is he going to go? This restart can get a little bit mad. The end of this lap has the chicane, and then you have the wall off to the right that cars will very frequently go into. A wave of cars ready to get racing. The green flag waves. No one can overtake till the start-finish line. Can we have a clean restart here? Avoid the wall on the right at your peril. Get on the throttle. Esteban Ocon going to be looking to have a go on the Mercs. Of course, DRS now not going to be enabled for two further laps. Ocon made a really good move on the previous start here. On this occasion, it's going to be a little bit tougher, I think, to make a move on the Mercs. Although he's looking at George Russell up the inside. Esteban. He didn't have the best weekend last weekend. I'll tell you what, he's having a fantastic weekend so far here. He makes the move on the British driver. He's up to P6 all of a sudden. Still a lot of racing left to go on here. As for Alonso, he's currently staring at the rear of Lando Norris and Max Verstappen just up the road in eighth. He took a five-place penalty in this race. Uh, I think he had some engine issues, obviously. Last race, he had that spin. He had that crash. I think that might have damaged some parts in his car. For Alonso, a move here on Norris would be very, very good if we could make it work. Let's pray for no incident into this corner. Sonoda's already, obviously, had an incident, taking out the two Alfa Romeos. Two retirements, lap one. Good job. Alonso hasn't been able to make the move. I'll tell you who has made a move, though. Esteban Ocon, next up the road for him is Pierre Gasly. The man is driving. 
like he's got a vendetta. He got Hamilton done. Can he now get the Alpha Tauri done? He's going to look to maybe send it around the outside of the chicane on Pierre Gasly. And I'll tell you what, he's going to make the move stick. The Frenchman, he's up to P4. Wet weather predicted. With both drivers, I've told them just to use up a fuel a little bit more. Of course, you naturally use less fuel behind the safety car because you're not going as fast. That does mean we've got a little bit surplus. And also with the rain, we might also struggle to use it. Right now, you can see Ocon running in fourth, maybe looking to have a go on Sergio Perez. That rain, if we just have a quick look, now forecast to still arrive around lap 10. When it arrives, madness could ensue. You can see here the pack, of course, very, very condensed because of that safety car. No one really spread out inside the first five laps. Ocon, with no DRS, I think going to struggle to have a go on the Red Bull, but... I mean, we have a new ERS unit. There's nowhere there. Maybe that can give us the little performance gains we need. He's already made a few laps up on this start. Could he make another one here on the Mexican driver of Sergio Perez? I had a, maybe a little look into the chicane. Thought better of it. I think he's going to be stuck behind the Red Bull at least for now. Ocon is driving like a man possessed with the help of DRS that the Red Bull in front didn't have. He's now moved up to third place. I feel like this fresh power unit is working wonders. The softer tyres have a little bit more performance, and he's just making the move stick right now. Next up the road is the Ferraris. They are a little way away. Ferrari have looked very, very good this weekend. You can see both Sainz and Leclerc up the road by over a second. That does mean we're not going to have DRS. Maybe need to get a little bit wary here of the possibility of a, a, well, an overtake from behind. Perez trying to maybe make a move here on Esteban Ocon, trying to get a little bit of revenge. Worth noting here, there is DRS both for the straight we just did and this straight here. They both use the same detection zone. So because we were ahead of Perez, he gets DRS for this bit. Unfortunately for Perez, so does the Alfa Tauri, so does the Mercedes. We are two by two. Going around the first corner, Ocon has lost out a place to Pierre Gasly, who came from nowhere, but he's going to try and make the move stick. Can he squeeze out Pierre? Can he hold on to third place here? Perez is tumbling down the order. Now down in sixth, and Ocon holds on to that spot. I'm going to tell him to push. I'm going to tell him to get aggressive. We need to try and get more than a second gap to the cars behind. Otherwise, I think we're going to get swallowed by them every lap like we very nearly did there. I have used all of Ocon's battery to try and break DRS. The bad news for us, whilst Pierre Gasly is close behind, he still has DRS and he's going to be able to close the gap significantly. He gets DRS for that first bit, but he also gets it here. Life is not fair. And I'll tell you what else isn't fair. Rain is arriving two laps early here. We are probably going to be pitting next lap. Everyone on slick tyres. No one, I think, has made it into the pits. So Latifi right at the very back is still out for at least one more lap. All of the drivers now on these slick tyres. The track is getting wet quickly. This has come way sooner than we expected. Our pit window was open for the Inters. We are going to double stack our drivers. We're going to ask them both to pit this lap for the intermediate tyres. Just as a little reminder, there are two different types of wet tyres in Formula 1. Now, the intermediate tyres, they have an operational window of around 1 to 4 millimetres, although there is a little bit of give and take there either side. If it gets to more than 4 millimetres, you want to be on the blue wet tyres. They are better when the track has more than 4 millimetres of water. Given how the rain's predicted to fall, there's going to be periods where it's wet. I'm a bit worried that some of these spikes might see us get to an area where it's above 4 millimetres, where the wet tyres would be better. But I think we have to just account for the fact the track is probably going to be damp more than it's going to be wet. And with that in mind, the Inters are just going to be the better tyre. You don't really want to be pitting back and forth for different tyres throughout. I'm going to be settling, at least for now, on getting on the Inters and sticking it out. Ferrari will probably look to double stack here, although they could keep one of their drivers out. We are going to make sure that both of them come into the pits. And in fact, Leclerc is being kept out here. So Ferrari avoiding the double stack. Okay, copy that. I think that's an error. The track is still very, very wet. We are going to come into the pits with both drivers here. Ocon down in ninth. Ocon in fourth. Hopefully Alonso isn't going to get held here. Hopefully Ocon comes out the pits as Alonso comes in. That is inch perfect from us. Aston Martin going to double stack their drivers. Looks like very few teams have double stacked their drivers looking at things, which is a tiny bit surprising. There is going to be big performance gains for everyone who has now pitted for the intermediate tyres. We've gone on to the green tyres. I am kind of anxiously wondering, is anyone going to go on to the wets here? Is everyone going to stick on the Inters? If the track continues to get wet, 
There is a world in which the Inters suddenly become the better tyre. But you can see, just, well, with Alonso there, you are so, so much quicker right now on the green tyres. The has to our right on the slick tyres. You are going to cruise past anyone on the wrong tyre right now. And Leclerc has been shafted by Ferrari. Oh, my word. Not now. Not now. Gearbox wear. Oh, I'll tell you what. Uh, the reliability of our car might be coming into question as things stand. Ocon making up some really, really big ground. You can see up the road, Russell and Perez, I think, are next up. They are on slick tyres. They are struggling away. We are able to push, and I really want us to push on this lap whilst we can. Volcon, it's probably not a bad time to be harvesting, considering his battery use. But you can just see here, if you're on the slick tyres in the rain, you're just trying to tiptoe back to the pits. I need Ocon to make the move, ideally. Of course, DRS disabled in the rain. There is no drag reduction system now. Leclerc and Perez up the road. Leclerc's going to pull into the pits. Perez up the road is also now, I imagine, going to go into the pits. Indeed, he is. Big, big time loss there. And with everything that's just happened, Ocon has gone from third in the race to second in the rain. And I'll tell you what, Alonso might find himself in a really, really good position as well because all the other cars that didn't pit previously are only just now coming into the pits. They have lost a ridiculous amount of time in the rain. And suddenly, we are running in P4 and P2. If we just take a little look behind Alonso, no one exiting the pits. Leclerc was really high up in this race, but, well, with the pit stops happening, with the delay they gave him... He has dropped from 2nd to 7th. Disaster for Ferrari. So the intermediate tyre has a pretty good tyre life ordinarily in the rain. If the track starts to dry, it will degrade much quicker than this prediction. There is lots of heavy rain predicted, you can see, for the middle of the race. I feel like it wasn't that heavy previously. Maybe I'm wrong. I feel like the wet tyre might be a tyre that we end up actually having to use here. I mean, this is the uncertainty that rain brings. You know, it's never consistent. It's never easy to know what the right move is. You can see moderate rain predicted in five minutes, light rain in nine, but then there is heavy rain after that. Right now, though, the track is actually drying. The cars are on the track. They are moving the water off the racing line. There is a dry line emerging, and the, well, the lap times are going to get quicker. We might need to make these inters last, so I don't want to push the drivers too hard on them. But after all the pit stops, you can see how things have spread out a little bit. Verstappen is just hunting down Ocon in behind. You have to imagine Verstappen will make a move here. The Red Bull is just a faster car. But Alonso and Ocon, at least when Verstappen makes this move, going to be running in P3 and P4. Not a bad spot to be in. Carlos Sainz, in the race lead, all on his lonesome, has had a moment there, had to go off the corner. He has lost a lot of time. It's lap 15, and I'll tell you what, Verstappen isn't able to pass Ocon right now. He's been right behind. He hasn't got the help of DRS because of the rain. The track has just been kind of steadily sitting around the 2mm mark. Sainz is currently leading the race. He's only five seconds ahead with that lockup. Obviously, it's going to be difficult, you imagine, for Ocon to catch him. But anything can happen. Races are weird. We saw it last weekend where the leaders of the race on two occasions had moments. Ocon has got to be in it to win it. Alonso kind of driving his own race right now. Four seconds behind Verstappen. Hamilton four seconds behind. Really, we're anxiously awaiting the surge of rain expected around lap 22. And perhaps also anticipating and waiting for Verstappen to make this move on Ocon. I think it's a case of when, not if. 20 laps into this race, 50 still to go. A lot's happened already, I realise. Um, right now, Ocon is holding Verstappen behind. We've got him set to a slightly more aggressive driving style, so he is going to munch up his tyres quicker. But as we discussed last race, his main driving attribute is his ability to, well, ease his tyres well and basically be aggressive on them without using them up. That smoothness stat, super, super useful. As for Alonso, built a little bit of a gap to Hamilton in behind, driving his own race in fourth, but looking very, very good at least for now. Yuki Tsunoda coming to the hairpin, locking up. Luckily this time, no one in front of him for him to punt. So uh, yeah, no damage done. I don't want to flame the weatherman, but the weatherman said that we were going to have the, the most heavy part of rain during this period here. The heavy rain never happened. It has been light rain throughout. There is still moderate rain predicted for in around five minutes time. Whether or not I can believe this weather forecast at this time, I don't even know. Apparently, it's 80% accurate. What a load of poppycock. Lap 22 has come and gone. Sainz is passing Latifi. Ocon holding the lead over Verstappen. Alonso, of course, in fourth. Not a great deal happening in terms of overtakes, although Leclerc has managed to pass Gasly since the stops. In terms of the tyre wear for our cars, we are pretty much where we want to be. 
assuming the track does dry up on lap 60, which I mean, given how inaccurate this is, who knows? Apparently, this moment right now is where the track should be at its wettest. It's currently at 1.52 millimeters, which is some of the driest it's been. I, I say that now. The rain has actually just started to come a little bit. Is the moderate rain arriving? Apparently, it's still just light rain. The weatherman lies. Ocon hunted away by Verstappen, but I'll tell you what, that's a good sight, isn't it? Max Verstappen spinning out, and that has built a little bit of a margin now to Ocon. You can see, just looking at it, Ocon, now five seconds up the road. Alonso, I mean, he's way, way, way behind Verstappen. It's going to take a little bit of hunting to catch up. But Ocon, I mean, he can relax a little bit. He can get easy on the fuel a little bit. We can just manage things here. Drivers are definitely struggling with the weather. Schumacher here in a good little position in a bit of a train, but spinning out in that Haas. It's it's a weird race. The wet race is definitely impacting drivers' ability. The good news for us so far, neither of our drivers have had a moment yet. Looking at the weather forecast, light rain predicted, but it is going to dry up a little bit before, well, potentially a little bit of more moderate rain. Who knows at this point? I feel like the weather forecast has just not been right today. Ultimately, though, we are going to hope the track dries up around lap 60. If it doesn't dry... I think with both our drivers' current wear, we could make it to the end of the race on the intermediates. Hamilton and Leclerc are slowly but surely catching up to Alonso. I don't feel like our car is necessarily the best when it comes to race pace. Hamilton here, 2.7 seconds behind Alonso. Can't quite see him in frame, although you could there for just a moment. The hunt is on, but at least right now, Alonso up the road, holding onto his lead, just needs to keep it clean. If we needed to, we probably could push him a little bit to try and build a margin. Don't want to alarm anyone. Ocon now showing minor gearbox wear. Apparently everything in our car is just made of... I don't know what it's made of. You can decide. Both gearboxes showing issues. I'm hoping that isn't going to be an issue today. Probably am going to have to remember for next race to swap those out for fresh ones though. 30 laps remaining of this race. Hamilton and Leclerc are battling away behind Alonso. And as a result of that, Alonso has been able to get up the road a little bit. As for Ocon... He has got to be a little bit wary because Max Verstappen, after a spin out, is still slowly but surely closing the gap. With 30 laps left, he probably can catch us, especially with the track drying more and more. You can see right now the rainfall still around that 2mm mark. The inter tyres definitely were the correct call. There has been a small change in the weather forecast, though. There's now two sets of moderate clouds. So apparently, it's, it's going to rain more rod moderately consistently. And that rainfall graph, may maybe it's just me. Is, is that peak higher than it was before? It might not be. Maybe I'm just seeing things. I, I, does this update real time? I, I don't want to believe it anyway. It's been wrong so much so far. I, I don't believe it. Carlos Sainz, the race leader, coming up to a long train of cars in front, led by Alexander Albon. This is a train of Albon, Vettel and Norris. Norris is going to move out the way. In the race lead now by nine seconds, Sainz. The reason I draw your attention to it is, uh, well, we are going to be approaching it with Ocon, Shirley, uh, in the next lap or two, you can see how many of these cars group together. Signs currently in the middle of them. This might be a chance for Ocon maybe to make some ground on Verstappen, or it might open up an opportunity for Verstappen to catch us behind. Maybe before we reach this point, we'll just up the fuel mode and up the, the leaning on the tyres that we're doing to try and catch it a little bit sooner and have just a little bit more of a margin to Verstappen before we approach them, because there's a reasonable chance we lose some time here. Ocon has caught up with this train of cars. There are five cars in this train. Verstappen still a little bit behind. We definitely did manage to increase our gap a tiny bit. I'm hoping on this straight here, we might be able to clear one or two more of them in an ideal world. I'm going to ask us to push and just go a bit more aggressive. Hopefully they move out the way. Please. I know they're all racing each other for positions, but they're racing each other for 13th place. No one cares who finishes 13th. And unless it's Ocon last race, in which case I do care. Um, we might actually be able to get maybe past the uh, the next car up the road, which I believe is, is it Sonoda? It is Sonoda. Thank you for moving out the way, Yuki. Thank you for not crashing into the back of us like you did our rivals earlier. A few more car cars up the road, but to be honest, with how everyone's moving out the way, I'm feeling remarkably calm. Ocon has managed to clear that pack of cars. Verstappen is still trying to make his way through them. He's now sat four seconds behind us, so... We've got a little bit lucky with the traffic, but you win some, you lose some. I'm still asking Ocon to push a fair bit. Just looking at the latest on the weather, that moderate rain that was predicted to come now hasn't arrived. Apparently, it's going to be partly cloudy in my nine minutes. And I think after that, 
the uh, well, the rain is going to be all done. It's going to be interesting to see how quickly the track dries. It's already pretty dry considering it has been raining semi-frequently. It might get a little bit of a top-up of hydration. It's going to be all about now getting off these intermediate tyres at the right time. Alonso has been driving in fourth. A very lonely race, it feels like. Since the pit stops, he's had a bit of a gap to everyone around him. Leclerc and Hamilton are still squabbling, still losing time to one another. And, uh, well, the Spaniard is just driving an experienced drive. He's just chilling out, currently running P4. 23 laps left. No more rain predicted. The track is already drying quite quickly as well. Ah, do I want to pat pit this lap for Alonso or wait a lap longer? Also, can I trust the weather forecast? Apparently, the, the track was meant to be at its wettest this lap. That's, I mean, that's clearly not the case. Can we all agree that? We can all see that, right? Um, I think this might be a lap too soon to pit, to be honest. As much as it's about to go below one, you get your biggest performance increases when it's around 0.7. However... I am just wondering with Alonso here, given the fact he's got bat markers to go through, maybe we pit this lap with Alonso? The other consideration we have to make here is, if we pit now, this is way, way sooner than I thought the track was going to dry. The rain hasn't come as we expected. We're probably best off going on to the mediums to the end. The softs, I don't want to say they'd be marginal, but it might be a little more touch and go. I think we can afford to play things safe. I am going to tell, however... Alonso to pit this lap for mediums. I think with this traffic, we're just going to lose any time. The track is drying up quite a bit already. We've got a bit of a safe margin to Hamilton and Leclerc. You can see the gap here is six and a half seconds. If we pit this lap, I expect everyone else to pit either this lap or next lap. We'll keep a close eye on that gap once the pits are done. Alonso, first driver out coming in for the drives. We made the right moves previously when the rain came. I'm hoping this is the right decision now. Gasly is in the pits from P7, so I think we might have timed this with Alonso correctly. Magnussen also coming into the pits. We are going to make sure that we're actually pitting Ock on this lap. We are going to go onto the mediums rather than the softs that we previously planned to come on for. Like I said, Alonso was, what, six and a half seconds ahead of Hamilton. When Hamilton and Leclerc pit, we're going to hope that gap is a tiny bit bigger. As for Esteban, he's going to be coming into the pits. Carlos Sainz coming down this straight going to assume that he pits when he gets to the end here if he doesn't ferrari are continuing to throw it throw when it comes to their strategy much like in real life i guess the game would be realistic if he didn't pit unfortunately for us he is gonna pit from the leader this race ocon gonna be following him in all eyes now on alonso to have a really good lap here we can probably push on these mediums and deploy down this straight we want to come out at least six and a half seconds ahead of hamilton who's currently clearing a bat marker, but you imagine he's going to be trying to swing to come into the pits here. Indeed he is. The Alpha Tauri stays out a lap. I think that was, uh, was that Sonoda staying out a lap? I think it must have been. They're coming on for soft tyres to the end. Is everyone else pitted for softs? I've played it safe with mediums. Everyone else is going on to use softs. They might be marginal at the end. We are going to be able to get a bit punchy with our tyres. Alonso already back up, you can see here, into fourth place. And in fact, he has closed the gap massively on Verstappen with that last lap. We were nowhere near Max. He was about four seconds up the road. I definitely think we made the right decision to pit that lap earlier. As for Ocon, of course, he's pitted. He's just up the road as well. If we look at the gap now, Hamilton eight and a half seconds behind Alonso. So we were the first team to pit. That has saved us about two seconds. A great decision made. These uh, medium tires we can afford to get a little bit aggressive on. Oh, well, you can see here, we are right up behind Max Verstappen. There is a bat marker just ahead as well. This car needs to get out of the way. Unfortunately for us, I think this car is going to give Max Verstappen okay. some DRS. Who is that going slowly around? I assume it's uh, Sonoda. It is Sonoda. Sonoda, don't cause any more crashes. He's braking on the straight. He's managed to get out of the way. Thank you. Yuki is making me anxious. He's been involved in a lot this race. He's already taken out two people. Alonso right up behind Verstappen. I mentioned it before. You get DRS for that straight there, but you also get DRS for this section. It's a cheeky double DRS area. We're on these medium tyres, but we've had an extra lap on them to get temps into them. Could we look to maybe have a look around the outside of Verstappen? Unfortunately not. But you can see Alonso setting the fastest lap of the Grand Prix. Still might be able to have a look. At max, Ocon six seconds up the road now. He's looking in a really, really good spot. 
We can actually tell him just to chill a little bit on his mediums. No point in him pushing. Alonso, though, hunting this Red Bull. And as much as I really want to push Max Verstappen, I think once the Red Bull gets its tyres into an operational window, it's going to be difficult to keep up with them. We do have DRS here. It's perhaps in our interest just to chill a little bit for a lap or two, harvest the battery, stay aggressive on the throttle, and just charge, charge this up. Because if we are going to make a move stick on Max Verstappen, we're going to need battery to make it work. I take it all back. I said about needing battery to make it work. Alonso doesn't need no battery. He is kinetic powered. He has made the move up the inside there of turn number two. He was on harvest at the time. And I'll be honest, I wasn't really expecting us to make the move that lap. But with it, we have a nicely charged battery. And I, we're, we're, we're back behind Verstappen. In the time they showed the highlight, we got overtaken again. Never mind. We overtook Max at the start of this lap. He overtook us in the middle. Can we have a go on him to end lap 52 here? We're going to look to maybe have a look at the inside. Alonso is thinking about it. He is thinking about it, but he just can't quite make the move work. Of course, gets the RS for this section as well. This is where we made the move on the previous lap. If we make the move here, unlike last time, I'm going to ask Alonso to give it the full beans, to hit deploy, to push, 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 push. See if we can break DRS with the help of our nicely charged battery. I think it's going to be difficult to get away from Verstappen, but what all this battling is doing is allowing Ocon in second to vanish up the road. I've got everything turned up on Alonso, and Max Verstappen's just still behind within a second. He's hunting us away. The only silver lining, maybe, although I don't think we quite reached them, is the fact there are bat markers further up the road, who, if they were a little bit closer, would be giving us DRS. You can see our flap isn't open, but actually, Max Verstappen's had an awful run out the corner. We're going to stay, I think, with everything turned up except the battery. I don't really want to burn for our entire battery. Despite that awful exit, you can see Verstappen still made up about quarter of a second on the straight. The Red Bull in a straight line is just a terrifying, terrifying car. And despite Alonso setting the fastest lap, there's still Max Verstappen just sat right up the chuff trying to make a move. I can't see a world where we get rid of him. We've used a lot of battery to try and make it happen. It did not work. I'll tell you what, I missed it. Ocon got absolutely ruined by the bat markers. I cannot explain how much they have just ruined his race. It was the Aston Martin, I think of Vettel, who slowed him down. And suddenly Verstappen is a second and a half behind Ocon. Ocon was like seven seconds up the road, was he not? I feel like I've blinked and suddenly this race has changed massively. We definitely can get aggressive with Ocon. Alonso and Verstappen still battling away. This uh, Aston Martin, is it Vettel? I'll tell you what, it's not Vettel. I'll issue an apology. It's Lance Stroll. You can see him in now finally getting out the way. But it's too little too late. We've got a Red Bull sandwich between our Alpines. Ocon, now 11, well, 12 seconds almost behind signs. Verstappen is going to have DRS on Ocon this lap. 15 laps left here. Between our drivers, we've got to try and wrestle a Red Bull. And we are, we are not bullfighters. We are not equipped for this. Max couldn't make the move up the initial DRS zone, but he will have DRS again here. Ocon is going to have to get on the defensive. Alonso, who we're on board with, has a great position just to watch this fight play out. And in fact, Alonso, 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 if you could just get round Verstappen and well, help out your teammate, that would help us immensely. Even if you could just wrestle with Verstappen and slow him down. I think it's going to be a very, very tall order to contain the Red Bull, but we're going to give it our very best shot. I'm going to ask Alonso and Ocon to deploy together. They are going to have to work together as teammates. We have two cars. They have one. Oh, I'll tell you what. Max Verstappen squeezed out Alonso a bit cheekily there. We do still have DRS. Telling Ocon to push it as hard as he can to try and get up the road by at least a second, but it's not going to happen before the next DRS zone. There's another bat marker who I think we're coming up to here. I'm trying to work out who it is. Is it Latifi? It's Latifi. He's already been lapped once. He's about to be lapped again. Is Ocon going to get DRS off him? He's not. Latifi, Nicholas, Sir Nick, please get out the way. I feel like Nicholas Latifi is the main protagonist. I feel like he gets the most screen time out of all the drivers except our own. Because he's always in the pissing way. There's been a lockup in Sector 1 though. Was that Signs? Has Signs had another moment there, I wonder? I, I'm saying that more out of hope than expectation. I was Max Verstappen. I didn't even see this. I was too fixated on the, the TV situation. Verstappen going into that final couple of corners locks up. 
has to yield the spot. And suddenly we're up to P... What? What is that? Is that P2 and P3? We've got both podium start spots. Verstappen's two and a half seconds down the road. He's made another error this race. I think now for our drivers, this is the time to deploy and well, just try and break the DRS, right? If we can just get through this traffic quickly, if Verstappen could get stuck behind Nicholas Latifi and we could vanish up the road, this might be our moment. On raw race pace, the Red Bull will catch us. If Verstappen keeps making mistakes, we might be able to fend him off. As our drivers go around the final corner, you can see Latifi currently in the way of Verstappen. We'll be giving Verstappen DRS though, unfortunately, because as a bat mark, he's within a second. The gap from Alonso to Verstappen sits at 2.5 seconds. Of course, Alonso is going to be getting DRS off his teammate here. Palmy wants to issue team orders and tell them not to fight. Palmy feels like I've got to be sensible here. Don't fight your teammate, Alonso. Let's not have an incident where we crash into each other. If things stay as they are, we could end up with P2 and P3. I'm going to ask Alonso just to harvest his tyres and get a little less aggressive. Hopefully that will keep him behind Ocon. As Ocon just looks to hold on to second place. Verstappen, 2.7 seconds behind. We definitely made up some time that lap with the help of Nicholas Latifi. 12 laps left to this race, and I still feel like there's a few twists and turns left. 10 laps left. Well, actually, 9 laps left. Um, you can see here, Ocon in second, Alonso in third. Verstappen has actually dropped behind by a second. Because all those teams that pitted did pit onto the soft tyre. We're on the mediums, which we can afford to push that little bit more. I don't think Verstappen needs to manage his tyres too much, but compared to absolutely everyone else, he has pushed his tyres hard, already down to 62% wear, and, well, I'm going to hope that he's burnt through them a little bit prematurely, and that now we can just keep this margin going. I've still got Alonso not fighting his team. I'm still asking him just to be sensible here. Um, we just need to work our drivers together and hopefully make it across the line. This should be simple. There's a yellow flag in sector one. Latifi is locked up. I mean, that means absolutely nothing for the race. He's already at the very back. He's already a minute behind the person in second to last. I'm going to make a controversial decision here, though. This is a bit of a big one. I am going to tell Ocon to let Alonso by. My theory here being that Ocon, he's a little bit kind of closer on the fuel. He could also do with charging his battery. We can now ask Alonso just to push a little bit more. And Ocon, following behind, can hopefully get DRS... Harvest his battery, save a little bit of fuel as well, and it's going to leave us in a better position. I think Alonso was starting to go a little bit faster. Of course, in uh, Alonso's situation here where he's got DRS for this straight because of the detection zone, I'm just going to ask him to slow slightly to keep his teammate in touching distance. Okay, Ocon has managed to catch the back of Alonso. I had to tell Alonso just to ease off everything. Ocon is now set on the instruction to not fight his teammate. We are running in P2 and P3. Ocon behind, we can now just stick on Harvest. He can save some of his battery, charge it up for any defending that might need to be done. Not perhaps the most popular decision, team orders like this, but it's kind of that uh, cyclist mentality, you know, where you're, you're looking to give each other a little bit of helping hand, conserve energy between you by alternating who runs at the front. And between now and the end of this race, we should hopefully be able to just cruise to P2 and P3. Lap 69, two laps remaining. We have just had our two drivers working together, really, for the last 10 laps. Found ourselves in a very fortunate position, of course. Verstappen locking up as he did, built that gap. And to be honest, we've been able to just maintain that gap over him. Alonso could be on for, well, second place. I do have to make, I suppose, one final decision of, do I swap the drivers in this situation? Do I let Ocon come second? Because we could do that, given how close they are. There is, what, one lap left here. I'm kind of tempted to let Ocon have it. Should we do that? Let's, let's do it. Right, Ocon. Get past Alonso. And both of you now. Go, you can both go for fastest lap to end the race. I'm a fair leader, but I think on this occasion, Ocon is the reason we are where we are. We let Alonso ahead just to help Ocon and also help out Alonso a little bit. Just with managing everything that was going on. Last lap here. Let's try and get the fastest lap of the race. Why not really, really push for it? We absolutely can do this. We are coming around the hairpin for the one and final time. I've told both drivers to give it full beans. They had battery to deploy. Verstappen has been left in our dust. Ocon, of course, taking the reins off Alonso, running ahead for this final lap. He is the reason that we're in this position. His exceptional driving during the dry period before the rain initially came 
is going to get us P2 here. And Alonso, not far behind, going to see out the podium. It is a double Alpine podium for the first time. Alonso, I think, might have just had fastest lap taken away by Ocon at the very death. And a little bit of retribution for Ocon. He did not have a good weekend in Azerbaijan. And he had to sit on the sideline and watch Alonso be crowned the race winner. There you can see confirmation Ocon fastest lap of this race. Really, really great performance by us. Decisions were made pretty much perfectly during the rain. A little bit of fortune with the Verstappen lockups, with the double kind of DNF behind us with the safety car, which I think allowed us to make up some pace and places before DRS became a factor. Not as chaotic as it looked like it might be at one point at the very beginning, but still a good race. Not a ton of action on the track today after, well, the, you know, the rain came, but we made it work. Esteban Ocon, P2, massive, massive performance for us. Another big overperformance, and Mercedes, but well, they got to be worried about us, right? We were third in the constructors, if I'm not mistaken, coming into this weekend, or certainly right behind them. With this here, we are going to be ahead of them. We are going to be third in the constructors. A bad day for Red Bull yet again. Ferrari sitting at the top of that podium. We have drivers in P2 and P3. Great to see Ocon for the first time on there. Hoist that trophy aloft, my son. And we have the, the awkward podium sequence where the music's copyright, so we can't play it. I feel like I need to record myself doing an audio version of it, like humming or, I don't know, making the noises, and we can play it. This It just feels weird. Is anyone else feeling uncomfortable? Get me, get me out of here. Get me out of here. What a crazy race that was. I'll tell you what, something that went a little under the radar. Kevin Magnussen for Haas making up six places. Lance Stroll as well making up five places. Unfortunately, slightly inconsequential for Aston Martin. You don't get anything for 13th, lads. As for ourselves, eight places made up by Esteban Ocon, ten by Alonso. We timed all the pit stops to perfection, pretty much. It was one of those ones where in previous races, especially when I've been playing them on streams, I've mistimed pitting around the rain. This time around, I'd don't think we could have done anything more optimally, which is kind of nice. There was so much uncertainty about the rain. If it had rained as moderately as predicted and the wet tyres had come out, things really could have been, I guess, elevated in terms of spice level. In the end, after the stops, there was comfortable margins, really. We did well to hold off for Stapp and that was the only bit of excitement. But a lot of it was just kind of cruising our way to a 2-3 finish. With that performance, Esteban Ocon moves up to 7th in the driver's standings. He goes ahead of George Russell of Mercedes. Sergio Perez continuing to struggle this year. He is down in sixth. In terms of constructors, Ferrari are running away with it. And all of a sudden, I've just realised, we're six points behind Red Bull. We definitely don't deserve to be there. We got fortunate with the rain today. The red flag last race out obviously changed some strategies that kind of played into our hands. But maybe, just maybe, we could give them a push. As for the team that I thought we would be battling for most of this year, Mercedes... Only nine points for them. A massive, massive day for us. And you can see there, of course, Ocon with the fastest lap did get that bonus point. A crazy, crazy day for us. Next time out, we are heading to Silverstone. Silverstone, of course, a very high speed circuit track, as are the next few in the calendar. In terms of car park development, we've got a new underfloor that's going to be ready in 10 days. The next Grand Prix is in 11 days. This underfloor, if I'm not mistaken, is a pretty hefty upgrade. So with that in mind, I might have to pay the emergency price, which costs a lot more money to get it manufactured for that Silverstone race. Because with it, I think we could be pretty darn competitive without the help of weather, without the help of everything else. And well, it's perhaps a good job we have got that part arriving because you can see here in England, there's no rain predicted, which uh, I mean is, is a bit of a rarity. Apparently, it's going to be 38 degrees on the Saturday. So maybe pack your sun cream thank you for watching today's episode as always i hope you guys enjoyed it i'll see you guys again next time for more and until then it is me jack and i'll see you all in a bit i'm out